real life stories to bring awareness to domestic violence, human trafficking, and systemic corruption. Welcome to our podcast and lives. We are so happy that you joined us and hope that you like and follow us and would love for you to share your thoughts in the comments below. Our videos are for information purposes only and any accusations are alleged unless found guilty in a court of law. Let the show begin. So this systematic oppression is done intentionally, intentionally to cause mass harm to the public to make sure that we continue to be their debt slaves. This was an intentional practice that they brought over from the paperclip project from world war ii to the united states to every country in the world because this isn't even a united states issue this happens in canada this happens in australia i've talked to women in france i've talked to women in germany i've talked to women in sweden i've talked to women in almost every country where they speak some sort of english i have talked to them and they have said this is happening in our country as well. So we know that this is a worldwide pandemic mm -hmm. and that they're doing it intentionally to keep us subservient, to keep us down, to keep us from creating more things than they have already because they don't want us to surpass them. And I learned about this in college in political ideology class. And it was always about the bourgeois and the politerates. Well, the politerates were the working class. The bourgeois were supposed to be the like ones who kept them down in this instance, in this ideology. But now I look up bourgeois and it says people who fight for our rights. And I'm like, what? When did that change? When did that they change? They do stuff like but, that. That's yeah, insane. They do. They do. It's really crazy. But think about it. The bourgeois back in the day, it was Marie Antoinette and um, and they're basically doing the same thing now because they're basically being like, oh, well, you know, have your cake and eat it too. Like, go ahead and they want eat it all. Yeah. It's and they want happen. it all and they want to keep us down. And they know that the only way to have a million servants and all the money is if they are in power over people. Exactly. And that right in itself is so egotistical that it, proves how corrupt it is and and that's why we had the revolution was to get away from those kings and queens and that's why the Rothschilds had so much interest in trying to take over the United States because they knew that if they could they could stay in power um and they've they done so pretty effectively <laughs> Yeah, they tried to, you know, burn all the witches because those were women who knew about medicine and they wanted medicine to be held by men. They wanted to, to be patriarchal. So they knew that if they could get rid of all of these crones, these natural women who were like learning about medicine through gossip, which back then just meant getting together and communicating. Um, and and so they knew this has been, this is like a multi-generational legacy for them. And the yeah, more anybody that is brilliant is that label, that exactly. not good label, that conspiracy label, that person yep. that has got a talent, uh, can see things differently than other people that have something to bring to the table to share with someone. Those people are overwhelmingly the conspiracy theorists until later it proves that they were correct. Um, but yeah. they have to go through years of suffering in their life being labeled crazy um yeah but you know it's it but the, it is it's the people who are who have something to offer someone uh someone that is uh you know like you said the medicine back in the day with the witches or whatever you know brilliant in some way people who are brilliant in some way will always be labeled as conspiracy crazy especially if they're not part of his story right. so like i mean history is like the perfect example of that it's mostly white men um, who they want us to know about. It's mostly their families, their relations. I mean, we see it in politics yeah. too. Most of the people that have become the presidents of the United States are all related somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that insane? It is. Mm -hmm. To me, I'm just like, what? That is, yeah. That's just too coincidental to be like 
uh, people don't question things. Yeah. Like, we're yeah. taught not so like in in from a very young age, we're taught not to question like these things are a certain way. Government is good. Yeah. This is a certain way. That is a certain way. You don't question things. This is your job. Yeah. This is what you do. Like, it is what it quiet. is. Don't ask nobody questions. wants to be the scapegoat and nobody yeah. wants to be Bruno, right? That new yeah. kids movie. Nobody talks about Talks Bruno. about Bruno. No. 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 Like they're yeah. literally indoctrinating the kids in that too because they're like saying, oh, but don't be the don't be the conspiracy theorist because oh everybody yeah. doesn't like you anymore if you yeah and you'll have to hide in the in the in the walls and watch your yeah. family yeah. yeah we're all weird in my family and we're totally cool with it so yeah <laughs> and it depends on the family it depends on the dynamic but yeah so there's two um definitions that I'd like to talk about one of them is apocalypse apocalypse literally means pulling back of the veil and then um you know and exposing the corruption and the truth so everybody's talking about the age of aquarius and um how it's upon us again or the age of pisces and they're saying that it's supposed to last for another 18 years and i say okay that's fine because the last time that we had one was during the american revolution guys how powerful is that? Yeah. And, um, so basically, this next 18 years, we really have to fight to expose them. We have to fight to to prove that that it could happen to anyone. And I think if we can gain enough awareness around that, that I think we'll reach a tipping point where everybody will know what's going on and then there'll be action because they'll want to do something about it. Oh. And I think until we get to that point, it's going to be kind of mute and void to do a lot of the stuff because like we are spinning our wheels we keep doing yeah lawsuit after lawsuit we're trying to complain we're trying to go to the media and it's not going anywhere there's not I enough with it, us that georgia's senator what was her name nancy schaefer she went in front of the un and she had all of these legal documents i wished we could get our hands on them mm -hmm. um, but she pointed out how cps and family courts are so corrupt and how they're actually harming all of the children in the united states and her and her husband were both found shot in the head and mm -hmm. it was a double suicide of course oh, yeah that's what happened <laughs> he goes to the UN and like complains about corruption and then obviously they just wanted to you know unalive themselves right um so it has to be a group effort because if it's just one of us that's easily done if it's a group effort who are they going to take down they'd have to try to take down all of us and that's right. why I think we're stronger together we're stronger with bigger numbers that's why it's really important that we organize more effectively. And one of the things that I see a lot that really is disheartening is a lot of people are in competition. And just because I made a website doesn't mean we have to go with it. I would go with anybody's website as long as people were attracted to it and going to it. Right. And actually communicating and actually coming together. I'm okay well, with it. Different organizations, you know, yeah. tend to focus on different things anyway. Yes, that I mean, too. everybody has yeah. their stars to have a website. They we have can all advertise you. each other's websites. You know, yes. like, if you need help with this, check out this website. If you need help mm -hmm. with exactly. that, check out this. I mean, that's what I've essentially have, you know, have done on mine you know i'm i'm yeah. all about sharing the love and you know yeah. i mean i'm not i don't want to have that responsibility of having to do everything yeah you know? it's silly there's and also it's different foolish. stages of the trauma there's different stages of the trauma so during part of my stage of the trauma i thought this was only happening to women i thought this was only happening to mothers during one part of my stage and so that's why i created a mother's fire because i was like oh we got to protect the moms and the babies but then the more that i've gone through it i mean i'm still very <laughs> very protective against men just because of my own personal situation and what happened to us but there has been like one or two men that have come through the you know masses of of 
feedback from men and I have believed their story to a T because everything that they experienced, I remember experiencing that as well, like wanting to flee or like, you know, like you go through stages <laughs> through this mm -hmm. whole thing. Sure. First, it's like shock and anger. And then you go through like, oh my God, can I run away? Or I'm so scared. And there's all this terror and then blaming the opposite sex because right now two of those guys were blaming the opposite sex because of course it was their, you know, female counterpart that was hurting them and abusing them. And I didn't want them to join with the, the father's rights movements because a lot of them are protecting parental alienation, which we all know what that means. And so I kind of like, you know, reached out to them and I told them, you know, I used to think it was just a mother's rights thing, but it's not, it's not a mother's rights. It's not a father's rights. It's a people who wish to do children harm and people who know that yeah. that's insane and evil. And that's about, so. You definitely and, need to uh, get past the, I mean, it's just such a big deal between male victims and women victims, you know, I mean, which, which it's crazy because they're essentially, they're both right. You know, nobody's wrong in this. I mean, men have this stance where, um, well, women just thinks it's all about them and it's not, it happens to us too. Well, you're right. It does. But then most women will rebut with, yeah, but the highest percentage is with women and children. So, yeah. and it's like, so it's a constant back and forth. It is. With, well, who's more important? We are all uh -huh. more important. There is yes, and that's a psyop in abuse. itself. That's a psyop mm -hmm. in itself because did you know that the government funded fathers' rights? dot com, but they aren't funding a mother's rights. Dot, I mean, sorry, dot gov. There's a fathers rights dot gov. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. not a mother's rights dot gov. They know yeah. what they're doing. They're trying oh, yeah. to pin us together. They're trying to pit us up against each other because if we fight each other, then we aren't going to fight them. And it just per continues in perfect. And if conflict. they, the, the children who are the most vulnerable to people who intend to do them harm are children of parents who are so busy fighting amongst each other, mm -hmm. that their yeah. children get thrown to the wolves. And so Absolutely. it is probably very much by design that, mm -hmm they would love for us to like you said pin the women and men fathers and mothers against each other and whatever if you're busy fighting with this other human being and there's a child at the center of that nobody's paying attention to the child and, exactly. and all so the these, child gets swept under the rug and out the back door with the abuser that's exactly. right that's or right. they take the child away and put them in cps yeah i've heard that a lot as well so yeah. And they even threatened us with that quite a few times. Yeah. And I was like, I don't care. I'm going to keep fighting. I know that you can't take my child without due process. And so I think yeah. that saved us. And I think that if people knew the actual rights and the actual processes of yes. what happened in family court and with CPS, that they'd be less inclined to be ran over by everybody. Right. That's and not be children. afraid to speak that, exactly. you know, uh, especially you have a lot of women who are, or, and I say women just because, but you know, people who are acting self-represented are when they're going in these courtrooms and they don't know their rights, you know, they don't know all these things. So, but, but starting to learn those things are so important and not being afraid to speak your rights. Um, you know, I went a long time where I was, you know, I knew that my rights were being violated, but I would just like tippy toe around it because I didn't want to upset anyone. I thought if I, I could just be so nice to everybody, everybody, no, screw that. They don't care. They are like doing what they're doing intentionally yeah. nine times out of 10. And so at the point, that you stand up and say the first time I've seen even a little bit of a uh, of fair procedure is when I submitted a motion that put my judge on notice that he was violating my constitutional rights. I had had enough of it. He was destroying my daughter and my family. I even said, quote, I said, um, I said that um, at this point, pretending that I don't know this is intentional is insulting my own intelligence. So yeah, I have yes. to put you on notice that I know what you're doing is intentional. You're violating my constitutional rights. Yeah. And if it's enough, that went into a legal document and emotion. And you know what? Um, that thing that I was afraid to do, you know, I haven't gotten amp like this huge success from it, but it's the first time I've even gotten 
a little bit of fair procedure uh, because I put him on well, Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to say, this is my rights. You are right. But in order to do that, you have to know your rights. And I think that's exactly. another problem in America is that people do right. not know their constitutional rights. People don't even know we're a constitutional republic. What mm -hmm. is going on in this country? So it's like, know mm -hmm. what your rights are so that you can protect them because you can't protect something that, that's okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. If you don't like know, most it, don't women don't know that they have the right to protect their child before there's any sort of parental agreement and that they can hide themselves in a way from the courts, because it's actually once you get into the court and you give them the authority to make the parental agreement, then you're then locked. You lose your custody and you lose your children to an abuse. Yeah. And most people don't know that. And so they yeah. just do play the good girl. Oh, I got to go to court. I got to play the good girl. And then the good girl's not going to work for you. The, nope. the good girl is going to nope. get you. The good uh, yeah. girl is going to get punished because that's yeah. exactly that's their what happens. That's yeah, their they love girl. punishing the good girls. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's oh, a fact. Yeah. And they don't know that. And I hate mm -hmm. that. I hate that because I was that. I walked Me in too. thinking, oh, justice is going to mm -hmm. happen. Me yeah. too. Until they see my evidence. Evidence, yeah. Until they see it. And yeah. then just like you, they just kind of brushed it off. They don't, yeah. they don't even care. They don't even care. Mm -mm. Yeah. No, they don't. Yeah, I think that, that, that that's probably the most important thing. And I feel like that that is something that uh, isn't just exclusive to like even uh, the kind of situations we're going through. I think that no matter what situation you're going through, if it's involving a courtroom, are the law law enforcement in any way um the best thing that you can do is know your constitutional rights and not just know them but understand each of mm -hmm. the clauses underneath them what are yeah. what protections and provisions are underneath each of those clauses for you what does that mean for your children because mm -hmm. you know a lot of people doesn't a lot of people do not even know that you know, CPS taking your child without due process of the law is a Fourth Amendment seizure of their person. They have the right to be secure in their person. And them doing that without affording that child and you due process is a Fourth Amendment violation. People don't know that. You know, it's the same thing as if you were falsely arrested. It's the same thing. Um, and people don't understand uh, their constitutional rights well enough to know when they're being violated. And then once you've allowed it to be so, and that's the key thing. And that's what yeah. I did in the beginning that I wish I could change is if I would have put my foot down that very first violation and said, I'm not going. Yeah. I'm not the one. You're not doing this to me. These are my rights. I know my rights, blah, blah, blah. If I would have said that right at the very beginning, yeah. I wouldn't be dealing with what I am four years later, but because nope. I allowed those violations to happen over and over. And now I've gotten myself into a place where this person who has violated my constitutional rights on repeat for a long time and also has probably done it for financial gain. So he has an yep. obligation on this end. And now my constitutional rights aren't that big of an obligation as that obligation, one thing. But another thing is this, it puts them where they've backed themselves into a corner. So even while I'm going to call him on every violation that he gives me right now, he's still going to have to really tremble in his seat before he ever gives an inch because he's backed himself into a corner that he can't do it or else he's going to validate what I'm saying. And that validation is dangerous. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, so, oh, yeah of course. Yeah. Sure, because if they validate that they know their oaths, they know what they're doing, then they act the opposite then that's just setting themselves up for right a beautiful rico blah, blah, right blah. and so then you then you put it but and that's when it's really dangerous for the person that's and that's why it's so important if you are somebody is listening to this and i listen to us girls that have all been through this right now if you're listening to us talk i don't care if you're scared learn your constitutional rights and exercise them speak yeah. them do not let people run over you because when you allow someone to run over you for so long they become accustomed to it and they get you lazy in their operations and everything is so confounded at the end they make it that way on intentionally yes. like i've heard yeah. of that saying oh we'll push this out we'll push that out we'll yeah. see the evidence next time we'll hear it yeah, to those witnesses next time but never happen because if and they so, do and that's mm -hmm. what they did to me but because what happens is even if they wanted to at this point say that you've got them put in a corner where they're afraid not to okay yeah. they still can't because 
if they allow you to bring, so for, for instance, I'm in a situation right now where on my next hearing, I'm supposed to be allowed to allow, uh, to show evidence about exposure. Well, he put the stipulation on it that it can't go back before December 2020. Well, why he don't want it to go back before December 2020 is because I filed an order of protection in July of 2020 that they dissolved without hearing. So, okay, yeah. that court date on December 2020 was when we were supposed to have been awarded joint custody or whatever, didn't even get put on the record. That's a whole other ballgame. But in between that space and time, okay, if I go on record now and show evidence that I had all the way back then that he wouldn't take, it holds him accountable. So right now mm -hmm. he's in a spot where it's like, no matter which way he goes, he's not in a good spot. And that spot is not, um, I feel like that's kind of like a dangerous spot for, for mm -hmm. everyone that's involved. And so it's like, um, there's no way that he's going to give that, get that inch because if he does, he's like putting the nail in his own coffin. But now though, in my situation, I am forcing him OK, I'm forcing him to to uphold my constitutional rights. And in doing so, I'm making him choose between my coffin and his to put a nail in all the time. Right. And so and that is a dangerous spot to be. So don't put yourself in this position, guys. Do not do it. Just do mm -hmm. it from the forefront. You know, you don't you only have certain uh, amendment rights that will apply in a family courtroom. There's just a few. You know, understand them. Just understand yeah. those. Right. Rights. Nobody uh, that's going to stand yeah. up for your rights like you that's can right. and will. Exactly. How Another great thing people don't are. know is the Hague Treaty. So the Hague Treaty was put in place with most countries to protect people from fleeing our country and into other countries. And one of the countries that doesn't participate in the Hague Treaty is Russia. And one of the ones that says they're part of the Hague Treaty, but just doesn't have the manpower to withhold it is Mexico. So <laughs> yeah. People just don't know these things and they should know them. Yeah. Because like we can say all of these things, we could never be prosecuted them against them unless we acted on them. But we can give this advice. There's not anything against the law and, in, in, you know, in sharing information that's common. No. So no. We, are, we are not professionals. It's no. no legal advice. So far, look, I'm exactly. so far I'm a professional. Uh, for your informational purposes. We're just discussing <laughs> things. Yeah. Look, I made every mistake that a person can make. That's why I'm right here. That's the only reason why I can discuss this with you and say, oh, yeah. don't do that. Don't do that. Because I did that. And it me did not too. work out good for me. You know what I mean? Learn from uh, it worked mistakes. out really bad for me. Yeah. <laughs> Worked out so bad. I was so lucky to have a second chance. I honestly was. Because once the custody is ordered, like, that's yeah. the wall. Nobody yeah. ever comes back from that. So, uh, protectivemothersrevolution.org, they do, uh, they work all over the world. They'll write your litigations. They charge $50 for your initial consult. You go to their website, you pay them 50 bucks, you send them an email and ask for a, a consultation. Then after that, I think it's like $75 an hour if they're still charging the same amount. Um, they'll write your litigations, they'll do everything. And then they advise you just to have a lawyer go to court with you. And mm -hmm. I was able to negotiate my lawyer to do that for only $200 an hour. Oh, nice. Because he didn't have to write any of the litigations or anything like that. We won because of them because they were bulls. Like they knew all the laws, they wrote them all in there. And they they weren't like the other lawyers where they're like, Oh, let's not say you're a dv victim we'll keep that out because that's mm -hmm. so dangerous because right yeah. then and there you're you're waiving all your rights as a domestic violence victim and so i honestly don't even like any of the lawyers that and most lawyers are so corrupt because they, they are they're sold out to the state because, yes they because are. protective parent will pay more money to protect their child in family court than than a deadbeat father would. And, and so, you know who will pay the most? A narcissistic abuser will pay the most money. It, yes, and they know that. They know yeah. that that hap that dynamic is there. But what Protective Mothers Revolution does is they screen you during your orientation because a lot of people who get into this victim state, 
they self sabotage like yeah. no other. Like yeah, I saw your post earlier about because that. Because they're like, nobody loves me, nobody cares. I'm just gonna die and oh, I'll take everybody down with me. Mm -hmm. And it, it shouldn't be like that. And and it, but it is, you but it is. Fight. Well, but and also, is. like I was saying the last time that me and her came on, when you have women that are, are dealing with trauma. Uh, and have been for a long time, you have a lot of women who are also using substances, like substance abuse issues. So then that causes you to um, to self-sabotage. Oh, self-sabotage as well, yeah. 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 So so they do that to, to make sure that you're a fighter and you're in a good place to keep going. And then they, t they check and make sure that you're at a place where they actually can help. And do you know where that line is? It's when, it's before custody orders. So before the parental agreement, they know that there's that's there's this small window at the very beginning of your case. If you found out your child is being harmed by your partner, or if you're in a very abusive relationship and you just want to get out, there's the smallest, tiniest, little bitty window that you can stand up for your rights, know your rights and get help or you get shoved through the back door and next thing you know you're not a parent anymore so when i was going through everything literally the cop that was taking he took my video he took you know all my evidence and everything he um we got into an elevator and he was like acting really weird and he's like where are you from and i was like all of a sudden his demeanor changed he's like where are you from and i was like utah oh. Because this, uh, my court case happened in Maui. And he's like, you should leave. You should go there. And I was like thinking, is he giving me bad advice? Am I going to get charged for kidnapping if I ran? Like I thought that. But but that's because I didn't know my rights. Yeah. If, yeah. I, if, if I knew my rights then when he said that, I would have left. Because if I just that's came why, straight yes. here to Utah, then I could have got in front of a judge, showed them the evidence. It might have been a little bit different because he knew how corrupt his city is. But he still participated in it because as soon as we got out of the elevator, he went back to his mask, you know. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. a few days later, when we reported the CSA again, he took my daughter away from me and put her in child foster care and tried to get me to recant my story even though he believed in me enough to say that to me in the elevator he still pulled this bullshit move that cops mm -hmm. do it's called a ruse like if you have never seen the um documentary victim suspect i highly recommend it it's all about how cops will do this to sexual assault victims so that they can close the docket on their case because if they have a bunch of dockets open, a bunch of cases open, they can get in trouble. They have to try to close them. And the best way that they can do that is by blaming the victim, by saying, yeah. are you sure this happened? Are you sure you weren't lying? Are you sure you weren't just exaggerating just a little bit? Are you sure yeah. there's something you don't want to Another thing with that too, is if you can get it closed out and, and a lot of courts push an agreement, because if you come to an agreement, you're yes. your right to an appeal. If we can teach this to as many people as possible, especially the younger generation, the women that don't have families yet, that haven't chosen a partner yet, if we can teach mm -hmm. them either yes. side of these mentally ill people, then maybe we can prevent a lot of harm from happening. For example, like because I grew up, I was sexually abused growing up, I didn't have a lot of boundaries. And I didn't know how to have boundaries that were healthy, that would attract good, healthy people. And it led to this series of horrible relationships. And now I see it so clear. Like I go on a date with somebody, I tell them my boundaries. If they press against them, I'm like, cut them off. Because yeah. obviously they're not the type of person that I want to be with because they are going to, you know, not care about anything if they don't care about my boundaries. And they're somebody who is acting self-servingly. They're selfish. They don't care enough about me to, you know, uh, you know, respect my boundaries. Then I know that they're somebody who would also harm a child. There's, they could be a pedophile. They could be a serial killer. They could eventually start violating my space, hitting me. 
because if they <laughs> violate my my boundaries, then that's who they are. That's just they who have they no are. respect for boundaries in general. Then yeah. the, the sky is the limit. You don't know what yeah. they're capable of. And it's sad because it could mean that most guys are eliminated from our lives, our dating lives. And that's sad for young girls because what do they want more than anything to be in love? But honestly, if we just leave all these guys out there, I think they'll be more inclined to work on themselves. Yeah. At least I hope so. Right. Well, there's what no is- motivation for that. There's no yeah, accountability. There's no for accountability violence. whatsoever in our society right now for yeah. men to actually do anything to self-improve other than well, their own I think, desire. I think a lot of that too, you mentioned earlier, but I believe that a lot of the issues that exist in uh, young people relationships, uh, and not just young people, like people in general right now is that women have been objectified so oh, yeah. strongly through pornography to men that our, our boundaries don't matter. Our feelings don't yeah. matter. We are being an object um and that thing and an object serves the purpose to please them and other than that um there isn't yeah i'm not saying it's that way with everybody okay um i'm just saying that it, that the the pornography crap causes a lot right. of that well and, that's a tactic of war actually so hitler was able to get everybody to not care about the jews being murdered because first he painted them to be a monster and yeah. what is a monster a monster is an object it's not it's not the yeah. same human as person you are. it's not a human it's yeah. not a person and that's exactly what it does is it yes makes it does us not a person so then of course why would why can't i use bdm on you yeah uh, or whatever i want to do. use bdm and on also you. it's like you know it's um yeah you know in the situation i was in um you said you know the guy i was with he was very uh super addicted to all kinds of it. I mean, I have when I went into court, I had pictures of uh, from his phone that I had taken. Oh. They wouldn't even look at him, but they were literally a man with a severed in front of his face that came with a threat on my family because he was not paying for services or something. I don't understand, but anyways, so um, so it's, but but what I'm going to get out is this: he was severely um, addicted, to, and because of that, um, like I. I literally, I was just like, as far as I was an object that was intended to please him. Um, there, it didn't matter what pleased me. It didn't matter if I was comfortable. It didn't matter what my boundaries were. In fact, he mm-hmm. loved to push and slap those boundaries completely. Oh, yeah. Just you know, that and uh, all the time. I mean, many girls complain about guys entering them in the back door and being like, "Oops, Oops. yeah, like what? No, that was." Dude. Yeah. <laughs> it, but the, yeah, so I guess what I'm getting at is like that, that is a problem. And and I really feel like it is causing our entire in society. It, it's a problem. Um, It's creating, yeah. like, it's creating um where people are objectified and they're not humans to each other. It's disassociating us further than uh, what yeah. we already are through our cell phones and everything else. It's just another step to like completely segregating every person from every person because used to, yeah. mm-hmm. um, we they had done really well to segregate everyone down, but your partner and you were still like your partner and you, you know, but now yeah. if there's yeah. porn, you don't even your partner and you anymore because now you've become an object to even your partner. And so um, exactly. and then it's taking that other connection down and human relationships and, and um, connections are so important for our health and our well-being. Yes. Yes. Um, What's more important than your country? Especially when they're isolating you. Your family <laughs> is the most important thing in your life. So what right. can a country do to separate us? Break up the family unit. Yes. Break up the family. <laughs> and poor yeah. are often symptoms of DIDs. So yeah. have you ever talked to your ex? Did you ever know if he had trauma in his childhood? Because he wasn't he was not a talker. He doesn't talk about it any yeah. um, he's not that's a vulnerable person with men. And I think that's why more men are abusers than women, is yeah. because they hold it inside until they get the urge to act on it. So yeah. DIDS means that you will put yourself in a situation to re-traumatize yourself just like you did 
like you had when you were a child. So for me, what that looked like was I became for like 10 years because yeah. I was re-traumatizing myself over and over and over again to try to figure it out, mm -hmm. to try to figure out my boundaries. Yeah. And yeah. so, and so a lot of the time, you know, guys will do because they're re-traumatizing themselves from something they experienced when they were young. Yeah. And then, and then, oh, that leads to, because I don't know how many men I've talked to where they're like, I don't want to become like my father. Yeah. Yeah. But then they actually become like their father, their father. because mm -hmm. part of the dids is uh, acting out the aggression that happened to you when you're young towards other people. And there's hyper and hypo duality. So even guys who pretend to be uh, very prude or whatnot could also have a side to them that they're watching all the time or they want to, yeah. you know, spank you during or you during sex or something like that. Um, uh, but yeah, it all plays into each other. So then my point is, is Okay, so we have X amount. So we'll say it's 25% of the population are going through family court and these procedures. And then their children are ending up with abusers. Well, mm -hmm. every year that's going to go up exponentially because all of those children now have dids or, or yeah. multiple personalities. Yeah. Uh, or, you know what I mean? And they become abusers. And then it's going to exponential. It's going to become so exponential that it's going to be where everybody's yeah. and they're having groups and hurting children and sharing children with each other. And I know that that happens in a lot of states. I mean, it even happens in Utah. I've heard of people trafficking their children to each other through the Mormon church. So, oh my God. Yeah. So, mm. so it happens. And, and I think that the only way that we're going to shut all of this down is if we educate everybody so everybody yes. knows what to look for and what to see yes speak exactly. out and keep speaking because that's yes really all we can do yeah mm -hmm. it really is all we can do at this moment and i think that us coming together putting aside our differences and being there to support each other is going to be the next step because once we're all together like we're going to be an army and we're going to be a peaceful loving army who knows what to do to execute everything in a way that brings peace back to our yes because and healing because mm -hmm. it's insanity and we see them as mentally ill the same people do we notice we see it we know that our judge is mentally ill if he's mm -hmm glaring at us telling us never to ever bring up sexual abuse ever again you know and so we know these people are mentally ill we know that they've gone into these positions because that gives them more access to hurt other children or to uh perpetuate the abuse oh and then what i was talking about with the girl who said her father was being trafficking her was she said my father said that he's bigger than god so then wow, I so talked cool. to another family in Colorado and she said her kids, she asked her kids, why won't dad let you come with me to church? And they said, because dad says he's bigger than God. So this is a huge problem. They're communicating somehow, probably via the dark web or some kind of hub or some kind of, you know, something. They're finding each other. They're organizing really well. They've been doing it for thousands of years. They have help. They have the government in their pocket. They have so much organization. And we need to be more effective than they are at communicating to the rest of the civilized people that are sane that maybe just don't realize this is yes. happening. Yeah, and also it's like... We have, uh, we we do have an army of people, but we have an army of people who are all traumatized and at all are all at different levels and different stages of trying to deal through their trauma while they're fighting these systems, while they're doing all these things. People aren't afforded the opportunity to heal, which is something you and I talked about last time, Danielle. But it's like, you know, that healing is so important. Part of my trauma from all of this has been 
just um my mind isn't the same so sometimes yeah, it'll, i'll go i'll go i'll go and then sometimes i'll just blank and a lot of that is from the trauma so oh, yeah you're you're in hyperdrive <laughs> for so I was. long when so you're and, and it long. it messes things up you know mm -hmm. and uh, so permanently yeah. sometimes when you it's a total reset that yeah. need to do and mm -hmm. you release so much cortisol into your brain that it literally scars your brain they have proven that children who are traumatized in their childhood will have the same scarring on their brain as a child who is in a severe accident wow like, and yeah yeah you know, because my brain is like scrambled eggs, straight up. Like, uh, yes. I, you know, it really is. Uh, and I do a lot and I work a lot and I work really hard and I, and I push myself really hard. And sometimes I probably need to just take a breath. But uh, even though my brain is scrambled eggs, I can still um, see things that need to be addressed, things that I can come forward and say, things that I can do, et cetera. But there are so many people who are just coming out of whatever situation they were in that's an immediate situation that are still fresh in um trauma that are still fresh in trying to figure out uh how to navigate the court systems who are still fresh in all of this um and those people will eventually get to a place where they can come forward too but until they do we just have to keep pulling the torch for them and then yeah. and everybody when you can bring something to the table because yes. um, that, and that's how we'll all get through this but you know and uh, they're so vulnerable at that point too because like yeah. i said that's the window part of their case that's the window part of their case yeah. and because they a lot of them are in trauma induced uh it's almost like schizophrenia but it's like a paranoia so yeah like, you are yeah they go you are into paranoid. this huge paranoia they block themselves off from the whole world yeah which yes. makes it easier for the courts to ruin them rip them apart the window and rip them yes. apart and yes, so that's what i did i did i look i'm going to tell you i've just recently started where i because i first of all i hate taking pictures i hate being on video for sure more than anything <laughs> uh, so i this That'd is like all new uh territory for me but i have been trying to uh my facebook got cut back a while maybe two years ago um i'm very vocal about like uh constitutional rights that kind of thing um one day i tried to get in my facebook i just couldn't well let me get back in with my use uh my approved devices i couldn't do anything i'm just like screw it i never even tried to get back in it after that uh so i kind of like connect like I, it was effective i guess i'll say this because i push myself away from the rest of the world and so then i'm suffering through all the shit i've been going through by myself and yeah. nobody knows it except you know the very few people in my close proximity and when you have been through a lot of trauma like for instance my very best friend well i have two very best friends Corona and jr hey guys uh but i i literally went from where i would see them every single week to i haven't seen them since the christmas before last you know because um my world's completely different than theirs now not because i don't love them but it you know explodes. I, people tend to hide they tend yeah. to they tend yeah. to freeze a lot of people freeze yeah. i was working with a gal and she just froze i paid for her to have consult with mother's revolution and she thought they were a spy and she hung up on him yeah. like literally it can go south so quick yeah so yeah, I mean, that. my number one advice for people who found out that they're in an abusive relationship or a situation they want to protect their children is to reach out oh. to as many advocates as yes. you can and start oh. learning all of your rights. Yes, because, learn your rights. Yes, and do uh, not hide. Those are the two most hide. important things. Ask do not help. hide. Don't be ashamed that you don't understand this new language. Yeah. Just ask people. Nobody to does when they first <laughs> A lot of people don't realize that you can call the court clerk and you it's their job. They have to explain everything. They, they it, like if you have questions about terminal, you know, the terminology, if you have questions about what forms or where to file or what to do next the courts have to tell you so right. if you call the clerk and she's being or whatever doesn't want to be on the phone just go in to the courts and be nice be polite mm -hmm. 
ask questions, ask for everything, ask for all the documents in your case. Cause like you you were saying, Vanessa, you were able to find all the collusion just by looking through it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, um, and they try to protect themselves. I remember I asked my, the detective for all the notes from when I talked to him and he deleted everything except for me talking about how my son had once had a schizophrenic uh, meltdown and that I was worried about, you know, because I was going through my trauma paranoia that maybe something had happened there too, but turns out it didn't. I was just super paranoid because my daughter was, you know, acting sexually with everybody in the household. And mm -hmm. so he tried to put, leave only that in my case and never mentioned anything else that I mm -hmm. told him about this abuse. Not yeah. even one detail because he wanted to make it look like I was crazy. I was blaming my son and that he was crazy too because he had had a psychotic breakdown. Yeah. And that's so, another thing too uh, you know so we said two i mean the two important takeaways in the beginning is do not hide know your constitutional rights but here's a third one and this is probably just as important you need to keep records of your documents everything. do not wait um, until they are yes. uh, multiple copies or, yes multiple and copies. A digital copy and Give paper file people. Yes, I keep for it you. on a junk I've drive. Had people yeah. erase my evidence because me too. they, yeah, they got me my stuff somehow. Friends even did it to me. So, yeah. So my yeah, keep yourself. Thing, my biggest thing is recording everything. Yes. Yeah, yes. not all states Every now. Phone before call. you consider that, you need to yes. make sure that you Google your state laws because every yes. state different some states require anybody in the recording to be aware uh, even like, transcripts can be uh changed yeah. so sometimes the scribers in the courts will yeah, not write it. down yes. everything that the judges say or so not just that i've been requesting mine for three years now <laughs> And, and they, they won't, won't give it to you? Yeah. Oh, so, my gosh. yeah. oh my gosh i picked up the dvds from my courthouse after everything happened because I wanted to prove how the judge was like an evil monster. <laughs> and the way that he talked to me about sexual abuse was so threatening to me that I was like, people have to see that. And guess what? My ex-boyfriend who didn't even know my ex-husband took them and destroyed them. Right. So yeah. it could even be that kind of a yeah sabotage yeah you don't know these assholes for some yeah. reason love to protect each other yeah they, oh, yeah, they do yeah they do i had um uh two of my exes working together in tandem to oh, file yeah. false reports against me with child protective services and it's yeah. like and one admits it in court you know and it's like but still yeah. they do nothing anyway so i mean it doesn't really matter they can do whatever they want and get away yeah. with it it but. could be crazy ex-girlfriends like i was dating a guy and he had this crazy ex-girlfriend she tried to get a hold of my ex-husband who doesn't even have parental rights over my daughter anymore there's like a there's a, a restraining order that he can't even contact us or you know be anywhere near my daughter and she contacted him and then was telling him all these lies about my ex and and then about me but i'd never even met her and they were trying to get together to try to get cps to take my child away from me and i yeah. was like holy shit people yeah, I had are that just fucking assholes and yeah. so you have to be careful but yes reach out to as many advocates as you can because none of us get paid so we're obviously doing it because we care right, right. <laughs> well that was absolutely amazing i wasn't anticipating this to go on as long as it has that's that's awesome mm -hmm. i might even be able to get a couple out of this a couple right <laughs> um, nice to meet you guys well i've learned yeah. that you do yeah, yeah nice so to nice you. to meet you, Vanessa. Yeah. Now we'll have to do it again for sure. Oh, it's so nice. Okay. Nice to meet you, girl. Hey, it was great talking hey, to you. Why guys. don't you do this?